So back at CES 2019 earlier this year, AMD announced their second generation Ryzen mobile processors, the 3000 series, because that won't be confusing at all. <laughs> now, I know it's been a little while and CES 2020 is coming up pretty soon. Make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss any of my coverage of that. Um, but finally, I have a friend who has a new third gen Ryzen... See, I told you it was going to get confusing. A second gen Ryzen <laughs> mobile processor. So for those of you that may or may not remember, I have a Ryzen 5 2500U in my HP Envy X360 15 inch laptop. I've made a whole series of videos that you can go check out. So, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello. <laughs> How do we do? Um, so my name is Prisha, and uh, I was looking for a better performance laptop this Thanksgiving, and he was nice enough to suggest this one. And uh, here I am, because I'm really excited uh, to check this one out. I'd like a really bad two core processor laptop. Ooh, yeah, the girl <laughs> laptop was not good. So, for a little context, we're both computer engineering majors at Texas A&M, and so we need to do a lot of stuff with computers, obviously. Um, oh my goodness, you trying to run, like, Vivado and stuff for Verilog was not pretty. Running Vivado on my previous laptop was <laughs> was a nightmare, but here I am trying. Yeah, she got a new one. AMD Ryzen for the first time. So, yeah, so she has the 13-inch version of the X360, if you want to yes. just, like, pull it up, show it up on camera. Fun. It's pretty much the same as what I have here, except she has the 13-inch version. Whoop, there we go. And the Ryzen 5 3500U as opposed to... Wait, do you have the 3500U? You do have the 3500U. I do. So, yeah, so there are two kind of interesting things to compare here. One, hers is one generation newer, so... The 2500U quad-core 8-thread on the original Zen 1 architecture, um, I think it's like 2 gigahertz, 2 to 3.6 gigahertz, don't quote me on that, I'll put the numbers on the screen, in the 15-inch chassis. Hers is the 3500U, so that's, again, quad-core 8-thread Zen 2. Four What's cores. 2.1 gigahertz to, I yes. believe, 3.6 still. Again, don't quote me on that, I'll put the numbers on the screen. But in a 13-inch chassis. So one generation newer, so Zen or Zen Plus. Wait, did I say Zen 2 for years? Damn, no, it, Zen Plus. So Zen, Zen Plus. Zen 2 laptops we're hopefully going to see at CES 2020. So I might get one of those. Um, but for now, yeah, Zen, Zen Plus, 2,000, 3,000, but 13 inch, 15 inch. So I have more room for cooling. And as most of you should probably know by now, Ryzen scales very well with good cooling. So it'll be interesting to see how the generational difference can compensate for the size difference. Also, I think they're both running Vega 8 graphics. Yeah, mine yes, is Vega 8 both graphics. Both Vega 8 graphics. And then the other main difference is mine is going to be a 14 nanometer process and hers is going to be 12 nanometer. So again, seeing, you know, how that's different. So we're going to start by running Quick Cinebench R20. So we're going to do it at the same time. Oh, I clicked it already. Oh, three, right, three, two, two one. one. So here we can see side by side, quad core to quad core, Zen to Zen Plus, which ones were, okay, well hers is already doing a little faster. Wow, yeah, um, you're definitely gonna beat me here. So it seems like right now, they're going at kind of the same speed, you're just a little bit ahead. But like if you look at like each core at a time, they seem to be running pretty much the same speed. Mm -hmm. Um, so that could just be that um, my better cooling is finally catching up, or and or and that your newer process gave you that little boost in the beginning. I don't know. We'll see when the score shows up at the very end. Oh, mine seems to have pulled ahead, actually. Dang. And and I'm definitely gonna be done first. Twelve, twelve. I had to get a new laptop only to lose again. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think cooling really came into play for this one. But yeah, no, so even though she got that little bit of a boost in the beginning, probably from the newer process node and the slightly refined architecture, when it came down to it, the cooling in the 15 inch just could, or the cooling in the 13 inch could not compare to my 15 inch. So almost done. I'm gonna guess like a 1000. Oh, pretty close. So 1017 on the 13 inch 3500U and a 1212 on the 15 inch um, 
2,500 U. Are you ready? Three, two, two one. one. So, um, this one we're also going to pull up, this one's going to take like a while, so I'm probably going to stop the camera. But we're going to pull up Task Manager to see um, what clock speeds each processor is running at. This one I feel like you might have a little more of an advantage, since it's only using one core at a time, it's not going to heat up as much. That's true. So your cool, the cooling gap may start to close a bit. So, okay, clock speed wise, I'm running at about 3.2, 3.4 gigahertz. She's running at about 3.3, 3.4. So clock speeds for hers are a little bit higher. Oh, now it's going down to 3.2. So they're pretty much neck and neck clock speed wise, meaning the cooling gap is kind of, uh, or is less than it was in the previous test. And the, her newer architecture is really showing its capabilities now. Okay. Okay, so I think it's, Okay, so your single thread is done already. Mine still has a little bit to go. So you got a 316 so far. I'm gonna put mine. You are 250. So... Mine is finally almost done. <laughs> Twelve hours later. <laughs> 244. So that was about where I was thinking. One thing I probably should point out. Um, back about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, I actually repasted my laptop, so I made a video, I upgraded the RAM, and then I also repasted it for some better cooling performance, um, so that might also, the bigger chassis and the fact that I repasted it might be making the difference. Is it, did you launch it? No, not yet. Alright then. All righty. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh. Oops. Oh, I started it. <laughs> it's fine. This one's not as much a time-based thing. We'll see the performance. So let's look at, I'm at about a, so so far my average FPS is 12, and yours is 10.8. So now that cooling could be coming into play again, um, even though, yep. I mean, it's a gaming test, and gaming is usually a little more single-threaded, maybe. It uses less threads. The heat coming produced by the GPU portion might end up, making a difference in terms of my cooling versus your cooling. So, um, FPS is at a, it's pretty consistent with the 12 right now. Yeah, same. It's about a 12 for me as well. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking we're going to get like one or two frames different. Also, so for reference, um, this laptop is pretty good for like eSports type gaming um, at 1080p medium settings. So I'm easily able to play CSGO, League of Legends, Civ 6, uh, games like that on this machine. If I just bump it, it's still at 1080p, I don't need to go down to 720. Um, as long as I just bump down to like medium settings, I'm pretty good. Those games are all playable. Um, so I'm assuming, especially since our GPUs are the same, um, they're both Vega 8s, so it's Vega architecture with 8 compute units. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to say that we're probably going to have similar gaming performance. So, my extra scores just came in. I had minimum FPS of 9.16, average of 11.6, with a score of 1550. And over here, we had 5.93 minimum, 9.35 average, and 1250. So they're pretty close. Again, that's pretty much what I said. That's like two frames difference. Mm -hmm. So this next benchmark is a new one that I'm starting to use. It's the Neon Noir benchmark. So this is a ray tracing demo that does not need RTX, an RTX GPU. So you can run on any system. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Okay. So, yep. Okay. So, off to a rocky getting, start. so this is basically the same performance as the previous one. Oh yeah, no, it's dipping down. Off to a very But we have, seem to start. have similar performance. Ooh, yours is maybe dipping a little more compared to mine. Okay, oh my goodness. Okay, so they're both done. I got an 1166, she got a 956. So again, they're like pretty close. I'm still, all things considered, pretty impressed. Everything has so far been fairly neck and neck. So the last test, we're gonna run two tests in Handbrake. So I know normally I do Premiere Pro for my uh, encoding, video editing benchmark, uh, a real life benchmark. But unfortunately I'm having issues with Premiere on my laptop and she doesn't have Premiere. So we're gonna do handbrake. So this is still 
a real world um, encoding test. So we're taking actual videos of mine and we're just transcoding them to a different format. So we're using the James Pryor interview from CES 2019. So it is a 17 minute long video. I talked to him for 17 minutes. It was really amazing. Um, hopefully I'll get to see him again if he goes to CS 2020 with sci-fi. I need to ask him about that. So it's a 1080p YouTube, it's using the YouTube 1080p preset on Premiere is where I exported it in. And so now we're um, going to downscale it down to 720p. Leo, okay, ready? Already, the Sorry. starting code is in there. Yeah. Ready, one, two, three. So we'll just let this go. Um, it looks like mine is going at about 50 FPS, and hers is going at 55. Oh, okay. So you seem to be doing a little better than me, and yours is 50 points. So hers seems to be doing a little better. We'll see once cooling starts to have more of an effect, um, and these start getting a little toastier. We'll see if I cool ahead, just like in the Cinebench multi-thread. We'll see. We're about how far? We're about five minutes in. I'd say almost halfway through this one hey, test. Hey, my FPS is now 34. Average FPS? Oh, is average is 38. 38.7. My average is a 45.7. So. Mm, okay. All right. So, it's done on my end. So it, you know, it did catch up. It took me 11 minutes and 26 seconds, and 14 minutes and 38 seconds on the 13 inch 3500 view. So again, it's like pretty close. Just those couple of minutes isn't really making that big of a difference. Yes. Alrighty. Are you ready? So, okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, go. So now we're doing the AMD keynote video that I made. So I attended AMD's keynote, CS 2019. I made a video afterwards, you can go check it out, where they announced, um, actually, this new laptop um, and a bunch of other stuff. So this one, we're going from 1080p to 1080p MP4 to 1080p M4V. Um, it's the same container, but it's a different extension. And it's re-encoding it, um, different bit rate, and using just handbrake settings. And so we'll see how long this takes. So far, I'm at an average FPS, about 38. Where are you at? 39. 39. So this one, I feel like this is going to be a little closer, mm. because it's not going to take as long, because it's um, like a three minute video, as oh. opposed to, it's a six minute video as opposed to 17 minutes. So it won't take as long to um, have like the difference based on cooling. All right, so five minutes, seven seconds here, six minutes, 19 seconds there. So again, it's like neck and neck. So I think that's pretty much it benchmark wise. I think conclusions we can make. Um, the performance is gonna be Pretty similar. I mean, Zen to Zen Plus wasn't that big of an architectural improvement, and considering the more advanced cooling capabilities of my bigger laptop that I also repasted, it's understandable that I would get that certain edge when it comes to um, XFR kind of pooling ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely think the cooling part of it, like, I am really curious to know what would happen if I had like an external, uh, like a cooler, like... like oh yeah, like one of those like pads that you can put on, like, that yes. just like continually cool. That'd be interesting to see. I really want to like maybe if, if there was like up. an ex extension to this video, if you, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have the money for it. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Maybe you, um, if they announce at CES um, the Zen two laptops, yeah. so the four thousand series, I might get one of those, and then we can compare all three. Maybe get some cooling pads as well. Yeah. Our mix. I really want to have like a more. I guess this is a pretty good comparison, but I'm just curious as to like what would happen in a more control setting. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and. Maybe a little more apples to apples. We have like two same size, different gener generation, yeah. or same generation, two different size, or yeah. Both. I mean, but, yeah. my computer kind of I think um, underperformed in like almost all except one test. Yeah. So Cinebench single threaded was the only one where was you pulled through. Worked? Yes. Um, um, but I'm yeah. definitely happy with the fact that like based on the requirements that I do have as a right. like a, as a computer engineering student, I think. Mm -hmm. um, whether it comes to Verilog, or like Vivado, or whether it comes to using like Visual Studios, I'm definitely <laughs> more at ease now than... Yeah, no, definitely. These are not going to take as long, so it won't heat up as much, and so you'll be For able sure. to benefit from that top-notch performance. All right, well, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, coming over and doing yeah, these tests. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything at all, leave them in the comments down below. 
sure you leave a like if you like this video or if you want to see pressure to come back in more videos <laughs> who knows i mean you're also a computer engineer you should be able to do stuff right yes i would love to like i'm doing more in here than i have in an entire semester of school <laughs> <laughs> wow yes um yeah other than that you can follow me on twitter at solid state tweet i don't know if you want to plug anything Follow me on Twitter. He has the links of it. Though. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll, I'll put, put it somewhere. Um, and yeah, other than that, I will see you guys in the next one.